Hi friends, welcome to biologyexamsfari.com. Today's topic of our discussion is a simplified summary of 10 features of Watson and Crick model of DNA. Point number one, DNA is made up of two strands. So this is DNA, it is made up of two strands. They got this idea from this X-ray crystallographic data of Rosalind Franklin of Maurice Wilkins lab. From this image, they deduce that it is a double helical structure. Second point is it is a right-handed helix. So DNA is a right-handed double helix. So this is a right-handed helix. It is just like a spiral staircase. Sugar and phosphate forms the backbone and stairs are formed by the nitrogenous bases. Point number two, the two strands are anti-parallel. Both runs in opposite direction. As you can see, this is the first strand that runs in 5 prime, 3 prime direction, whereas the second strand runs in 3 prime, 5 prime direction. What does it actually mean? So this is the DNA strand. It is made up of nucleotides. So this 5 prime means the fifth carbon position of the pentose sugar to which the phosphate is attached. It is actually the 5 prime phosphate end. Whereas in the second strand, it is the third carbon position in the upward upward region that is 3 prime OH end. That is why this is called as anti-parallel. In the bottom end, it is 3 prime OH that is third carbon position orienting downwards. Whereas in the second strand, it is the 5 prime phosphate, fifth carbon with the phosphate. So the strands runs in opposite direction. One strand runs in 5 prime, 3 prime direction, whereas the other strand runs in 3 prime, 5 prime direction, making it anti-parallel. Point number three, each strand is made up of deoxyribonucleotides joined by phosphodiester bond. As we know, it is made up of nucleotides. This nitrogenous base, pentose sugar and this phosphate makes a nucleotide. So the two nucleotides are joined by this phosphodiester bond. We have given a three minute video on phosphodiester bond formation. You can refer that for more. Point number four, sugar and phosphate forms the backbone of the DNA strand. So this is a DNA ladder. As you can see, this backbone is made up of sugar and phosphate. So this is a backbone chemically. So there is pentose sugar to which phosphate is attached and this backbone is joined by the phosphodiester linkage where and nitrogenous bases are projecting from the backbone towards the center. So this backbone of the spiral staircase is made up of sugar and phosphate whereas the stairs are made up of nitrogenous bases. So this forms the backbone. Point number five. The two strands are held together by hydrogen bonds between nitrogenous bases. So here you can see in this DNA ladder, these are the nitrogenous bases. These nitrogenous bases joins these two strands. So as you can see, this is the first strand and this is the second strand. This strand is joined by the hydrogen bond between the nitrogenous bases, thus forming the stairs of the spiral staircase. Point number six regarding base complementarity relationship that is proposed by Charkov. Watson and Crick got the idea of base pair orientation from Charkov's experiment. According to Charkov's experiment, Charkov's rule, adenine always pairs with thiamine, whereas guanine always pairs with cytosine. So as you can see, this adenine always pairs with thiamine by two hydrogen bonds, whereas guanine always pairs with cytosine by three hydrogen bonds. This helps Watson and Crick to explain the DNA copying mechanism also. We have given a detailed video on Charkov's rule, Charkov's experiment and how to calculate the base composition using Charkov's rule. You can refer that for more. Point number seven, DNA contain two groups called major groove and minor groove. So this is the minor groove and this is the major groove. When the phosphate sugar backbone is very close, that forms the minor groove. Whereas it is far apart, that forms the major groove. As you can see, this major groove is wide. It is 22 Armstrong in the case of pDNA and it is deep. Whereas minor groove is narrow, which is 12 Armstrong. These grooves arise because 
the glycosidic bonds of a base pair are not diametrically opposite to each other. And this proof is very important in DNA protein interactions. Point number 8, 9 and 10 regarding the dimensions of DNA. Watson and Crick explain the most common form of DNA that is the BDNA. In the case of BDNA, the diameter of the double helix is 2 nanometer or 20 Armstrong. Whereas the distance between adjacent base pairs, the first and the second base pair is 0.34 nanometer or 3.4 Armstrong. And the final point is each turn is made up of 10 nucleotide bases. That makes 0.34 into 10, that is 3.4 nanometer per turn. One turn makes 3.4 nanometer. These are the dimensions regarding BDNA proposed by Watson and Crick. Now before concluding the major contributors, there are many scientists involved in the discovery of DNA structure. But the final conclusion or solving the puzzle was made by Watson and Crick. The major contributors are Morris Wilkins and Rosalind Franklin. This data, this X-ray crystallographic picture provided the clue for DNA double helical structure. Then the second major contributor is Charkov, Charkov's rule that provided Watson and Crick with the idea of orienting the bases and also helps them to explain the DNA copying mechanism. Watson and Crick along with Wilkins were awarded with Nobel Prize in 1962 for this work. And this is a historic paper that is published in Nature in 1953. Hope you understand the DNA model proposed by Watson and Crick. If you are new to this channel, please subscribe and support this channel. Thank you so much for your support. You are with biologyexamsfurry.com.